Somalia, where thousands have fled the capital of Mogadishu as government forces continue to fight opposition Islamist fighters. Fierce street fighting over the past months has claimed hundreds of lives. Just last week, bombs killed two lawmakers, the country's security minister, the police commander of Mogadishu, and nearly two dozen civilians. On Saturday, Parliament Speaker Sheikh Aden Mohamed Madobi urged the neighboring countries of Ethiopia, Kenya, Yemen, and Djibouti to immediately send troops to Somalia. He also asked the wider international community to assist Somalia against, quote, foreign fighters and terrorists. We are also calling on the international community, especially the U.S., the EU, and the Arab League, to play their role in helping ensure the survival of Somalia from an aggressive enemy of terrorists. Some news sources, including Al Jazeera, reported Sunday that Ethiopian troops had returned to Somalia. The Ethiopian government spokesperson, however, told reporters that Ethiopia would not invade Somalia without an international mandate. Kenya's foreign minister said Sunday that his country would not, quote, just sit by and watch the situation in Somalia deteriorate beyond where it is. Somalia's Islamist al-Shabaab militia issued a stern warning against any intervention by neighboring countries. Meanwhile, the number of people displaced by the fighting continues to rise. The humanitarian situation is dire, with over a third of the country, that is some four million people, dependent on international agencies for aid. Mumina Abdi and her family were forced to leave their home in an impoverished Mogadishu neighborhood for a camp for the internally displaced. We don't have enough money or materials to build shelter for my children. I used to wash clothes for a living and stayed in the Karan district, but we had to flee from our district to here. We're helpless during the rainy season. To find out more about what's happening in Somalia now, we're joined from Washington, D.C., by the Somali-American human rights activist and writer Sadia Ali Aden. She is the co-founder of the Somali Diaspora Network. Welcome to Democracy Now!, Sadia. Tell us what's happening. Thank you. Well, um, what's uh, happening in Somalia is uh, heartbreaking, uh, as you have just uh, described, uh, uh, co-host has described. Uh, you have uh, uh, humanitarian crisis, a serious humanitarian crisis, the worst in Africa. Uh, one over one million people uh, internally displaced, uh, 3.5 million on the verge of starvation, and uh, you have uh, thousands and thousand new, uh, thousands of new internally displaced uh, civilians, as you have just uh, also one has just described, that have resulted from uh, the newly uh, started conflict. So what you have is a government that has been elected uh, in, in a neighboring country, uh, the Djibouti, uh, Djibouti, that has arrived in Mogadishu uh, and has uh, thought that it has uh, established uh, a serious base in Mogadishu that has been met with a serious challenge by the opposition groups. And remember, these opposition groups are the same people who were part of the Islamic courts. Uh, the Islamic courts, as you remember, has uh, brought six months of uh, peace in Somalia, samples of peace, the best Somalis have seen uh, since the civil war has started. But uh, that in, in, in Islamic courts have broken up into two factions now, or three, I should say, uh, which is uh, the government, the unity government uh, united with the Sheikh Sharif group and al-Shabaab, the military wing of the uh, former Islamic courts. And then you have the uh, Hizb al-Islam, which is led by Sheikh Weiss, which is uh, one of the other leaders of Islamic courts. So they're all struggling for power. And the idea is uh, from the opposition to topple the government. And uh, there is no dialogue. There is no serious reconciliation that's taking place. The civilians are caught in the mid middle. Uh, whenever also something, uh, a weapon is hit or um, uh, uh, anything arrives on the side of the African troops, Amusam, uh, they respond with heavy uh, artillery shelling, which kills civilians. So the civilians have nowhere to go. Uh, and those who have arrived in their uh, refuge area, uh, the UN is reporting, uh, particularly women are being raped. Uh, and also, uh, both sides are uh, not uh, caring for the civilians, and both sides are recruiting uh, uh, children to go front line under the age of 15. And this is reported also by the UNHCR and UNICEF. 
What about the role of uh, Ethiopia and some of the other neighboring countries? Obviously, Ethiopia in, invaded for a time and then pulled its troops out. What, uh, uh, what should be the role of these neighboring countries? Well, the role of these neighboring countries should have been uh, what it has been at the beginning, which was welcome the Somali refugees, civilians, women, children, and elderly who were fleeing from the conflict uh, between the warring factions, the warlords. But what it has become, as soon as the war started, especially with the Ethiopians, was uh, to arm militias against each other, to arm warlords against each other, and to facilitate uh, the continuation of the civil war, the Somali civil war. Therefore, Ethiopia and Kenya have not uh, have become uh, the enemies who have contributed to the instability of Somalia. And Sheikh Aden Mohammed uh, Noor, Sheikh Aden Madobe, the Speaker of the Parliament, calling for the intervention of these neighboring countries, frontline states uh, such as Djibouti, uh, Ethiopia, and Kenya, uh, was met with a shock by the Somali community, particularly those in the diaspora and uh, those who know the brutality of the Ethiopian forces. So uh, he cannot, of course, call for intervention from international court, uh, international uh, uh, world, because Sheikh Aden doesn't have the authority to call. Even the parliament doesn't have, because the parliament, as you know, is a 550 right now, and it's based on 4.5 formula, which is clan-based for major clans and others, which is the minority groups. So these people in the parliament, the majority of them, do not really represent the Somali people, much the less the clans or the regions that they say they represent. Sadia, Therefore, the, the, they can't. The last time Ethiopia invaded was backed by the United States. What is the role of the United States here? Uh, backed by the United States when a more stable government, the Islamic courts, was in power that destabilized them. Absolutely. Uh, what the former government, uh, Bush administration, has done was uh, United States. Uh, uh, has withdrawn from Somalia in 1993 after the infamous uh, Black, Hawk, Black Hawk Down uh, that took the 18 uh, American uh, soldiers and killed thousands of civilians. There, it was a hands-off policy. And then after September 11th, Bush administration has decided to re-engage, but not with the local authorities, but with uh, warlords. And those warlords have actually went to hunt for traditional leaders, religious leaders, and uh, there was uprise, grassroots uprise, and that was what produced Islamic courts. Those Islamic courts that brought the stability and the peace were toppled by the Ethiopian uh, uh, government, the Ethiopian troops, with the help, of course, of the uh, administration, of Bush, Bush administration. And those have fled to Asmara, and then they became alliance of liberation uh, re 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 of uh, Somalia. They are former organization, and then they broke up into two, one led by Sheikh Sharif, the other led by Owais. So what now? Uh, we are realizing, and we have realized, and our good for the longest was supporting warlords and engaging Ethiopia to take care of the problems of Somalia is not the best way to go. It was a foreign policy that has failed, that has not succeeded. It was misguided. Therefore, uh, uh, Obama administration should take divorce from that uh, foreign policy established from the uh, Bush administration's eight years uh, of uh, administration. And, and re-engage Somalia, but engage with the people, we engage with the local authorities, not with the warlords, and not to use Ethiopia as intervening or in, uh, mediating uh, government to take care of the problems of Sadia, Somalia. Uh, about a minute we have left, I'd like to ask you, the Western press has often uh, mentioned the presence of uh, increasing presence of foreign fighters, many of them supposedly linked to al-Qaeda uh, in Somalia. How accurate is that in your assessment? They're not that accurate. Uh, we don't know what's inside Somalia the same way that we didn't know when the uh, origin, uh, the earlier uh, administration has also claimed. But what the foreign uh, international uh, community or uh, foreign journalists should do is go inside and investigate and find out the truth about Somalia and make the next process uh, to help this government reestablish peace in Somalia to be homegrown, home found, and run by the Somalis, 
the same way that are the two administrations that are built in Somalia in northeast and northwest of Somalia Sonia, that have succeeded. Finally, the way we know about Somalia, usually in the United States, is because of piracy. Uh, what happens yes. to U.S. ships or international ships overseas? I mean, in the high seas. Uh, in this last few seconds, uh, can you talk about that issue and how it relates to what's happening in Somalia today? The piracy is a, is a symptom. It's not the disease. The disease lies on land. It's the Somalia needs a serious political solution. Uh, the piracy is resulted from illegal fishing and toxic waste dumping, nuclear waste dumping. And what the international needs uh, community needs to do is introduce a resolution banning uh, all these nations to stop the illegal fishing and the illegal toxic waste uh, dumping in Somalia. And Sadia, the we'll have to leave Somalia. it there. Uh, Sadia okay. Ali Aden, a Somali-American writer and human rights activist who is co-founder of the Somali Diaspora Network, and that does it for the show. Democracy Now! is produced by Mike Berkshu from Dokadusa. Aaron Mate, Anjali Kamen, Stephen